This is Public Defib TV. I'm your host, Lawrence Sabin, and uh, thank you for joining us, uh, joining us for this uh, episode here. I'm thrilled to have our very first guest here. Uh, this is Barry Bitzer, and uh, Barry has an amazing story of what happened to him some four years ago. So uh, Barry and I uh, got the opportunity to meet one another. He's with the Biopark, the beautiful Biopark here in Albuquerque, and he shared his amazing story. So, uh, Barry, talk to us. What? Tell us a little bit about yourself and what happened there to you four years ago. Well, four years ago, I was not at the biopark. I was uh, working a slightly higher stress lifestyle, administering a subacute psych facility. Uh, but it was a Saturday. Uh, my wife and youngest kid were in Denver playing. Uh, he played hockey up there. My older two teenagers uh, were with me. I think they were about. Uh, middle school, early high school at that point, and uh, so I, I needed to go by the, the, the facility, check in with my staff, then I was going to go work out, and I went to Midtown Sports and Wellness here in Albuquerque to, uh, uh, to get a little cardio in, and I weighed a bit more in those days, about 40, 40 pounds more than I am today, but um, got my, uh, got my uh, elliptical in, did a little run on the machine, uh, told the kids I was going to go take a shower. Uh, and then uh, I was in the locker room when, uh, when I went lights out. No memory of anything beyond that until I woke up in uh, the emergency room at uh, the UNM Hospital uh, cardiac, cardiac Unit. And uh, it was, uh, uh, my, my kids reported that uh, the, to mom uh, that I had slipped in the shower because as they saw me getting called out by the, by the EMTs, um, uh, I had, you know, I had a, blood and scalp because once I went down with uh, what's myocardial infarction, you know, the, the widowmaker heart attack, um, the, uh, the, I, I hit my head and so there was a, there was a big gash. No blood at the time because I had no blood pressure, you know, my heart had stopped. So, um, uh, but uh, there was an ER doc from UNMH, give a shout out to Dr. George Kennedy for that, he was there at the right time, the right place, uh, and we had AEDs, uh, give a shout out to uh, to sports and wellness for supplying uh, life pack AED in this case um, to, uh, to, to jumpstart my heart. So I was only dead a couple of minutes, uh, not really coherent. I guess your brain's got to reboot once you've, once you've gone lights out like that. So I was kind of a mess in the, in the ER. And, uh, they weren't sure if they were going to, uh, to operate or if, uh, you know, if I was going to have sentient, uh, sentient life and so forth. So, um, or who would operate? You know, it's like, oh, he needs triple bypass, so or bypass, and they'll figure out how much once they go in. So it all happened pretty quick, and uh, the kids phoned back to the wife in Denver. She was on her way back at that point. Said, well, it wasn't slip and fall. It turns out it was a heart attack because you know, once uh, once he got the heart started, then of course the blood started squirting from the head. Um, so I woke up with uh, stitches and tubes, and uh, after I got the the triple bypass. Um, I was uh, uh, thinking I was doing all right. You know, I'm sitting there in the uh, in the recovery room. Um, the uh, doc, chief of cardiology, I want to say Ricardo, Dr. Ricardo Ricci, uh, comes around. He's teaching kids. You know, he's teaching young uh, surgeons. Uh, it's a teaching hospital, so he says, "Okay, this is patient number such and such." You know, talking about me like I'm not in the room. And I'm just sitting there listening to the whole thing. And I'd gotten up and gone to the bathroom when no one was around. And uh, had a bunch of tubes and, and instruments hooked up to me, so I just dragged them all with me. So he comes into the room and he says uh, uh, to them about my case. And then he, uh, he looks at me and he says, you know you're going to have to get up and walk. And I thought, well, that's kind of an odd thing to say. I've already been up to walk, but I'll, I'll get up. And I pulled myself together, got to the edge of the bed got my tubes and monitors on the roller and I was about to hop out. He says, take the walker. I was like, the walker? So I reach over, I grab the walker, I throw it over my shoulder and I head down the hall. And he's like, oh, he's like, look at that. You know, it's like, I wasn't in bad shape. You know, when I had the heart attack, I was a lot heavier in those days, but I wasn't in bad shape. It's just I'm prone to my whole family, prone to uh, uh, producing this plaque buildup and then a sheet of it breaks loose and clogs the artery that feeds your heart muscle, then you do what I did, drop dead takes an AED to bring you back. Uh, amazing story, and uh, yeah, had it not been for the ER doc being there, 
sports and wellness, equipping their locations with the life pack AEDs, uh, early response time, that's really the key. So, um, I mean, you were literally dead and revived with the, you know, with the quick care and cool thinking and, and a life-saving device here. So, um, amazing. What's happened since? You know, how did, how did your family react? How's life different? My kids were a little freaked out. The wife was a little freaked out by the whole thing, and uh, she uh, she came rushing down from Denver. And uh, uh, I guess the first time I came out of coma, sedation, whatever, uh, um, I had no idea who I was or where I was, and I went a little postal on the uh, on the employees. So apologies to the uh, UNM nursing staff there. If any of you are watching, I, uh, I I understand I was a little less than well behaved. I destroyed a bed. That had been restraints, and so I destroyed the bed that I was in, um, and uh, all sorts of mayhem. But uh, second time I came out of uh, unconsciousness, sedation. Wife was there; she's in my grill, recognize her. Uh, come out calm. Everybody standing there on guard. All the muscly nurses are ready to go because I think the first team wasn't uh, wasn't a match for an old wrestler. So, and then of course I go see. A, I get a cardiologist. I go see him, and he's you know put me on the machines, and they check me out. He says, you know, if I didn't have your chart and a 12-inch scar down your chest, I'd never know you'd had a heart attack. So, no permanent damage. So wow. I got, uh, wow. I got real lucky with uh, with that quick quick uh, quick recovery because of the device. Wow, so. amazing, and the rippling effect, you know, your wife, your kids, family, loved ones, right. and so, really amazing. So, our audience, Barry, is, uh, we have some industry professionals watching this that know all about AEDs, but we also have a lot of people that don't, don't know much about AEDs, so what would you share with the public and our viewers to Public Defib TV about the importance of AEDs? Well, it's real, it's real straightforward. The devices will actually sort of talk to you. You open it up. Uh, it, it tells you what to do next and it's you know slap one throat here and another one here and stand back and uh, it'll monitor and it'll do, it'll do the do the work automatically um, the uh, uh, the place I work now the New Mexico Biopark Society we support the zoo and the aquarium at Tigley Beach um, we don't we didn't have one in our little office and so I was like you know we should really have one of these and so we finally got around to put it in our budget we didn't quite budget enough uh, the, ours came in at about 1500 we budgeted a thousand for it so we had a, a, a donor uh, a step up uh, uh, Bruce Malott CPA with uh, O2 CPAs here in town said, that's ridiculous you know he pledged money to to make sure that we would be able to get one and so I got to give a shout out to, to him too I, uh, I don't know if he's lost uh, members of his family uh, to heart attacks but uh, but he saw that we were uh, Foolish for not having one, and so uh, he was able to step up and, and, and fill in the gap. We ran out, bought one, and now we're all training on it so that we'll uh, watch the video so that we all know uh, know that we already know what we're doing. It's real simple as the as the, as the video reveals. Well, Barry, we so appreciate you coming on, sharing your story. Uh, it's an amazing story, and it's the motivation for why we do what we do. And um, you know, and it illustrates the importance of really proactive thinking. You know, the phone calls that we hate to get are the ones where somebody's life has been lost tragically. So we really appreciate you sharing your story um, and inspiring others to do the same uh, so we can do this proactively. So um, to check out the next video, simply subscribe or uh, input your email. That way you can find out the next time we have one of these uh, videos here with publicdefib.tv. Thank you.